to every single solitary person throughout our country and throughout the world. We are grateful to know that we can have an impact on our world and things that go on. That we are not in isolation, but we are all connected in that beautiful web of life. People, animals, trees and plants, water, and out into the universes. We're all connected. We're all one. And thus our vibration that we send out into the world is being felt now. We see peace. And we claim peace for all. We allow ourselves to be open to the service today and whatever is ours to take from this time together that, that our hearts are open, our minds are open to maybe understand things a little different. And we're grateful that we can make that choice. And so it is. Amen. All right, we have another opportunity to sing another song. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, it's called The Golden Dawn is Breaking. I don't think we've maybe sung it for a while, but uh, I understand you all know it. And so we're all going to sing that together. If you'd like to stand, please.
Anyway, thank you all. Please be seated. Do you feel yourself having been elevated to a higher place? <laughs> right? Just by the words of the song, right? Because words have power. And, uh, you know, when we sing songs and put it with melodies and, and have fun with it, guess what? We lift it up. Yeah. So I'd like to welcome anybody that's new today, but I don't know that I see a single solitary new person. So, um, and Annie's here today playing on the piano for us because, um, gosh, I think Robert is probably sitting in the sun somewhere on the beach. I do believe. And... <laughs> So anyway, we wish him a, a wonderful vacation, and we appreciate Annie for being here. And it feels good. It's just a little different. So if it's loud and wanky, I apologize. Oh. <laughs> I think we like it that way. <laughs> well, we're just grateful that you're here. Thank so um, uh, we want to uh, look at any prayer requests that we might have. How about that? And we'll um, all say a prayer together around any prayer requests that you may have that you'd like to share with us. Anybody? Yes, please. Our nation for healing. Okay. Nation for healing. All right. Yes, Mary. Um, highest and best for our new president and his administration and lots of wisdom. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, Barbara? Um, my aunt was recently taken to the emergency room, so prayers for healing for her as well. Thank you. Okay. Jude? Um, for Naomi Carter, who uh, broke a leg, she was older person and um, has also tested positive for COVID and her family. Okay, definitely. Anybody else? Mary? Clarity and strength. Uh, discernment. The strength to follow through uh, when you get the information. Okay, thank you. Amy? <clears throat> Healing for Carrie um, after mastectomy surgery. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Well, um, we certainly will hold those intentions all throughout this week as we move into our own prayer time at home. But let us say a prayer together as we hold all of those intentions in our heart. Together? As we set ourselves in the one presence and in one power. We realize that our thoughts have the power to heal and bless. We set them out now, carrying love, peace, joy, and light to situations and celebrations that have not been realized. Hold on by thought and prayer by prayer, we transform the world. Amen. All right, now Mary's going to come up. She's got going to have our daily word and scripture and. Uh, I don't know what else you got going on, Mary. <laughs> Steve, did, did I turn that on right? Steve's gone. He's, <laughs> he's left the booth. <laughs> I think you're on. Am I on? Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. It's so nice to be here. Um, this is such a, a good place to come when we all need to come back to all those things that we know and love and let uh, Reverend Denise and Reverend Jenny spread their sunshine over us. And, and as our thought for the day says, to uh, water and nurture our garden. So that uh, thought for today is prosperity. That's our word. Mm -hmm. And our affirmation is, I claim prosperity now. Right now. <laughs> Everybody want to say that? I claim prosperity now. There we go. Yeah. Uh, when I feel tempted to wish for a more prosperous life, I remember my prosperity begins at the level of my thinking. I focus my thoughts on the many blessings already in my life and feel grateful. From this place of gratitude, it becomes easy to notice more and more blessings all around me. The awareness helps me develop an attitude of prosperity. I tend to my thoughts of prosperity as though they are flowers in a garden. I plant them in good soil 
and nurture them with water and sunshine. This rich environment allows prosperity ideas to take root and grow. As I nurture these ideas, I am abundantly blessed in life, love, health, and joy. And the scripture with that is, they feast on the abundance of your house, <clears throat> and you give them drink from the river of your delights. Psalm 36, verse 8. I don't have to I wanted to ask, since we're talking about prosperity, Reverend Jenny, you didn't ask for celebrations today. I was kind of waiting for you to do that. But I have, I have one celebration I'd like, I would like to share with everybody. On Thursday, I got my first COVID-19 vaccine. Oh. So I was blessed. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a wonderful feeling to, to know that at least we're making the progress in that direction. That's yes, terrific. Absolutely. Okay. So our scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. Well, there we go. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I guess I've got work to do. <laughs> we have a big treat from Reverend Jenny and followed by an even bigger yes. treat. Yes. Barbara's going to give us some wonderful special music today. Yes. Thank you, Mary. Well, since I kind of goofed and didn't ask for celebrations, does anybody else have a celebration that we want to talk about? Yes, gentlemen in the back. Yes, Jenny, uh, Sharon and I are celebrating our 17th anniversary today. Oh, wow. Yay. God allows me to spend my life with this. Oh, how sweet. How wonderful. Hey, if I ever forget that again, just say, you know, i got a celebration, and we'll just keep on keeping on, right? If I forget to say the word. Just know that we, we want to celebrate all the time, because there's always wonderful things to celebrate. So, you know, um, Terry asked her Sunday school class to draw pictures of their favorite Bible stories and show she was really puzzled when she looked down at Kyle's picture, which showed four people on an airplane. So she asked him what story it was meant to represent. And Kyle says, it's the flight to Egypt. So she said, oh, I, um, I see. Um, well, that must be Mary. And that's Joseph. That's the baby Jesus. But who's the fourth person? Kyle explained, oh, that's Pontius the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> now, I thought that was funny. I had to add that to that. Because <laughs> Bob isn't up here doing his joke. <laughs> and he's doing platforms. I thought I'd throw in a joke today. Um, so here it is at the beginning of the year. So, you know, Reverend Denise and I, in deciding way ahead of time what we're going to talk about, we thought we would talk about the five unity fundamental spiritual principles. And back when there was paper around and you had bulletins, on the back of the bulletin was always listed the five principles. Okay? So I'm going to talk about two of them today, and then Denise is going to talk about three of them next Sunday. So you have to come back to hear the rest of the story. So, <laughs> so today we're going to review them. Um, they were composed by Connie Fillmore, who was the great granddaughter of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, our founders. And her version of the five principles you can really find all over the place. They have um, uh, poster boards that you can hang if you have children that you're teaching them to in your churches, etc. Uh, so you see a lot of um, different ways of putting these ideas into uh, expression. And I, I really, and now these are not like five ideas and then that's it. These are not five spiritual principles and that's all that there are. There's lots and lots of spiritual principles. Um, in fact, I remember years and years ago when I started realizing that the principles are working in my life whether I know them or not, I thought I should know what these principles are so I can work with them. So I wound up going to the ARA, which is um, the Edgar Casey Center in Virginia Beach, and I found a big book that had all these spiritual principles in it. And I thought, I had no idea 
that all of these things are working for us and uh, a part of our lives, and I didn't even know them. So once again, we're only going to kind of focus on five, but there certainly are many, many more. So Unity's concept of God says this. There is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good. One presence, one power, in the universe and in my life, God the good. And then I'm going to go on and talk about the, um, the fact that we have um, God is individualized in us as the Christ, the Spirit, the Christ within, the indwelling Christ. Our very essence is of God, and therefore we are also inherently good. Have you ever imagined? I mean, have, have, we, have you been taught along the way how, how good you are? Because today I'm feeling as though we might have to put away some of our ideas of a child as we were a child about what what is our connection with this thing called God? How were you influenced to understand God when you were growing up? I mean, I was raised Catholic, so I had a very um, a different idea of God than I do now, for sure, for sure. Praying, very different now than it was back then. So when we start with the concept of what is God and how God shows up for me now, it, is, it has changed, and it did reflect my upbringing, or what others taught me along the way. And then maybe there was a turning point, and there was a turning point in my life, when I began to discover a new meaning for God, and maybe you did too. And knowing that our concept will continue to change and grow as we change and grow. The idea of God is not going to change. We change in our understanding of what it is, right? So do we have that to look forward to, you know, as we move through our life. Originally, we began to think of God as judgmental. If we looked at the Old Testament, you know, it was always, you know, you did good, you didn't do good, we're keeping track of this. Um, uh, God cared only about his chosen people, the Israelites. You know, God would kill people, animals, children, whatever he wanted to eliminate. This was all the stories that we were told in the Old Testament. And God was being described in a way that was the way that the people could understand it at the time. They saw what went on in the world, and they said, uh-oh, this God, or of course at that time were gods, we better, we better shape up. Because this God is going to look at what we're doing, and then we're going to have to pay a price for that. But we impose that understanding of God, or the infinite, on it. You think that could be true. And then Jesus comes along, and all of a sudden God becomes a, more loving. You know, he would call God Father, or Abba, which was a really a, a very endearing term of this presence and power that we're, that we're talking about today. So as we grow in our understanding of God, and we stretch our understanding of God through this principle, there's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, how can that be? God the good. Hmm. We expand this concept by saying that God is a principle. And as principle, it is a principle of absolute good. Now, this is not absolute good on the human plane. You know, so many of us are trying to be perfect, right? We've got to be so good. But it's on the plane of the divine. It's on that other side where we can't really see or know what, what it is, but we have, we have this feeling within ourselves that there is a goodness that flows through and under everything. Or do we? God is principle, 
as described by Myrtle Fillmore, co-founder of Unity. In one of her healing letters, she said, God, look, this is so beautiful. God, and then in quotes, principle, is in us as the very life and substance that we use and our use of God's gifts increases our ability to use them and direct them. Have you ever heard that before? That's kind of different, isn't it? It's the very life and substance that we use in order to live, in order to grow, in order to, to um, have a greater understanding. God is life. We make that life into living. God is love. We make divine love into loving. God is substance. We take the substantial reality and we bring it through into the manifest world. We know we've talked about that many times here. God is wisdom. So we claim oneness with divine wisdom and it expresses through us as wise thoughts and decisions and actions. The light of that light that glows from heart and face, yes, every cell of the body is alive with this energy of life that we call God. <clears throat> Isn't that a little different way to think about God? Uh, Reverend Ellen Devonport wrote a book called The Five Principles not that long ago, and she calls, she, I'm going to give you her definition, and she calls this the God for grown-ups. Okay, so we'll just act like we're grown-ups. I'm going to like this. <laughs> This God is the creative force, and I love this definition, behind sweeping galaxies and infinitesimal life forms of bewildering fractal patterns and perfect seasonal cycles of mind-blowing beauty and pure potential, the oak tree and the acorn, the child and the microscopic twist of DNA. That's how she's describing God. It's everywhere. It's everything. And it's us. If there is only one presence and one power, then you might say, well, Jimmy, what about evil? Huh? That's a lot of evil stuff goes on. How can this be true? As principle, God is never changing and works whether we know it or not. This idea of um, evil is this not in God? That is not a description of one presence and one power. There can't be an opposite to that. But what happens? On the earth plane, we are the ones that are able to create things through the ideas that we get from spirit or that come through us, and we label them good or evil. That's how powerful we are. So I'm thinking about, like for an example, think about something as simple as electricity. I mean, when it was discovered, it changed the world, right? And so everybody's, this, isn't this wonderful? We got this idea, now we've got electricity, we can be out at night, we can light our streets, we can light our homes. And just as easily, humankind, can decide to use that electricity to kill somebody in an electric chair. The idea is wonderful, but how do we use it on Earth in our humanness? You see how powerful we are? We get to decide how we're going to use something. We have the power of choice. As, um, which is one of the, the things that really does allow us to have control over our lives, not in a way that's like, oh, I'm controlling, but I can decide, I can move this way, I can move that way. I can decide that, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study, or I can decide, you know, I'm going to go to nursing school, or I can decide that I'm going to share my gifts through um, uh, teaching children. Those are all possibilities, and then how do we do it? If we use that energy of God, it's going to be, you're going to love what you're doing. You're going to love the patients. You're going to love the children. You're going to love the people. Or you can decide, well, um, I'm going to use this in a little 
little crooked way. You know, if I see that somebody is on the on um, the the, the um, edge of dying, I mean, I can give them a little bit more medicine at the hospital, and and they and I'll ease their pain, and they can move on. You know, we can see we, we can make all these decisions ourselves. That's how powerful we are. The spiritual realm is the realm of perfection and absolute. And like I said again, in the physical realm, in the three-dimensional realm, we have free will. We're able to choose our actions, emotions, and our thoughts. And we can use them to create things that we label good or things that we label evil or bad. So when we say there's only one presence and one power, then we must be a part of that life force. Never separated, never isolated, because our actions never are disconnected from this energy of life. Or God, if you want to call it God. I mean, other religious traditions call, call God different things. But we're never disconnected from it. It's not like we've got to go out and find it. We already are in it. Living it. Breathing it. Moving through it. All the time. When we say that God is good, we are saying that we are inherently good. We are inherently love. We are inherently power. Any words that we use to describe God as being something, so are we. In Genesis 1.26, it said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Doesn't that tell us that we are made of the God stuff? I remember um, early on, I used to think about, about like this big pile of gold. I thought, okay, well, if that was God, then we're all jewelry. We're gold jewelry. We have every um, aspect of what gold is, whatever it's made of, but we're all individual. We're all beautiful, beautiful pieces of jewelry in God's jewelry box. I like that idea. So we're, and then we go on to say we're spiritual beings created in God's image, that the Spirit of God lives and breathes and has its being in each of us. Therefore, all we are inherently good. The principle states that, we're, that our true nature or our essence is spiritual, that we are made of God's stuff. So when we say that, we don't want to um, we don't want to put our human labels on God. We want to look at it as as ideas, idea of love idea of peace, idea of joy, idea of, um, of faith, those kinds of things. When we say there's only one presence and one power, we are saying that our true nature is the power of the infinite. Our true nature is one with the creative force behind all form. Our true nature is one with the creative power of breathtaking beauty, creating of human beings, the growing of mighty redwood trees, and the power of our mind and our magnificent bodies. That's what we are. I know I wasn't taught this when I was in, in Catholic school or going to Catholic church. You know, it was, I was a sinner. I wasn't worthy. And I'm here to tell you, no, we were taught wrong. We are worthy. We are worthy of all our good, of prosperity, of health, of joy, and love. Let me ask you if we can do this. So let's say you've actually bought into these two ideas of what God is, right, this principle, but also even though it's principle and it, it's out there everywhere, it also is part of us, so it's very personal. But I was reading an article by um, a, a licensed unity teacher student, and he said, because when I read this, I thought this really is appropriate for what went on this week in our country. He says, we must remind ourselves that the presence, the power and presence which we call God is the principle of good or absolute good, active and everywhere present. Can we live this idea to see the power and presence of this good everywhere and in all circumstances without exception. Once we have 
establish the truth of this principle in our consciousness. We allow it to transform our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Seeing only one power and one presence, we live our lives in accordance with the truth that there is nothing or no one that can actually, in reality, oppose the power of God. And from this perspective, there is no real need to cause or to fear in our consciousness. Just because we may not be able to see the good in a situation where we believe that there is no opportunity for good does not mean good is not present. And then he says, if you ever are in doubt of this, simply bring your idea back to number one. There's only one presence and one power active in the universe and in our lives. God is good. So that's the challenge. You know, as we continue to grow and understand more about spiritual law, principle that never changes, works for everybody all the time in the identical same way, um, when we say, can I see any situation that there is good here? Is it possible with what went on this week? It's a challenge. And not just this week, but I mean, there's been a lot of circumstances in our country and in the world that have caused us to wonder what is going on. I mean, when you think of COVID and you think of all the folks that have passed away, can I find good in that? And how could I do it? How can I change my way of thinking? Or maybe somebody dear to you has passed away. Can I find good in that? That's the challenge of being on the spiritual path, you know? And being able to live the ideas that, that we talk about here in unity, which I absolutely love, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But I want to, I will tell you one story before we leave, because this is, this was a cute story. <clears throat> so there was this little fish, and it was going from stream to stream. And he was, uh, he'd come up close to the, um, to the edge of the water, and he heard talking going on. And there was a teacher, and the teacher was telling the kids that, um, uh, water, you need to have water because that sustains your life. Water is absolutely necessary. Without water, you're gonna die in a few days. So the little fish was thinking to himself, oh my gosh, where am I gonna find water? So I better find some of that precious substance called water or I'm gonna die in a few days. So the little fish found another fish and asked him, where could he find water? But none of them knew where he could find it. So he kept going, stream to stream, asking different fish, where do I find water? And nobody could tell him. He was exhausted. He was about ready to give up when he saw an older fish, a wise fish. And he went over to the, to the fish and he said, can you help me find a precious substance called water? It'll give me life. Water, replied the old wise fish. You were concerned Con, uh, conceived and born in water. Water is your environment. Water supports your very life. You are surrounded by water. Water is a part of you, and you are a part of it. So where do we find this idea of God? Where do we find this principle This uh, of one presence and one power? We're in it. We can't get out of it. We breathe it. We live, we, we, we live and move and have our being in this idea of God, Godness, life, love, joy. So it's up to us as to how we use it to enhance our lives and the lives of others. So those are just two ideas 
that may have you thinking differently this week about what this idea of, of God is, or two of the spiritual principles that unity talk about. And you can believe them or not, it doesn't really matter. It's what, what calls your heart. But just know that, that they're working, that they are working in your life because you can't get out of the water. It's all around you. So let's take time now to go into a time of meditation. So take a breath. And just allow yourself to um, close your eyes if you're able to do that. And take another breath. Just feel yourself relaxing into the chair, feeling that, that you are in that water of infinite love, that you're floating in the water of infinite peace, that you're diving into the infinite water of compassion. It's refreshing, isn't it? It's comfortable, isn't it? No matter where we go, or where we find ourselves this week, just imagine yourself in that water. It refreshes. Cleanses, it heals, it's who you are. So take another breath. We'll just sit in the silence for just a few moments. Allow yourself to awaken to whatever is yours to awaken to, knowing that all is well. silence. In the silence. In the silence. to make our way back into the 
feeling the seat beneath us and the, the energy around us. I'm going to leave you with a poem by James Dillett Freeman, who is a poet laureate in the Unity Movement. It's called Yet More. And he writes, by looking at an acorn, small and hard and plain, could I conceive the oak tree? By listening to the rain, can I imagine oceans? Or could I understand the desert if my hand but held a single grain of sand? Then let me never think that what I chance to see, this face, this frame, these thoughts, that this is all of me. Yet more than ageless oaks or seas that have no shore, I, me, there also is yet more. Yet more. So what what more what more is there for you? What more does that does this power and presence call you to do in your life? So just think about that this week. One presence, one power, God the good. And that you are that goodness of God. You are the essence of God and the call to Christ. And so it is. And now Mary, listen, we have a song by where Barbara's going to come up and sing a beautiful song for us. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Jane. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. The song I'm going to be singing for you this morning is a hymn from our hymn book. So some of you may know it. Um, so you're going to hear the chorus four times. So Steve is going to put, there we go. <laughs> so if you know it and you want to sing along during the chorus, please do so. There are the words. So the first time I'm going to speak the words. And uh, then we'll get into the song. So, and I'm I'm here with Annie, so we can hear each other and make sure we're together. So, we hope you enjoy it. I am the light of the world. You people, come and follow me. If you follow and love, you'll learn the mystery what you were meant to do and be.
want to uh, allow you to, to just know that um, you are the light of the world. And come and follow me. I love that. Uh, so let's just have a time for our offering. If you'd like to put your offering in your hand, we always have a basket in the back as you leave. And if you um, have gotten something from our service today and you'd like to bless uh, the, the Unity Church, please come and uh, through our website. Right? Is that right? <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And we would, uh, we'll, we'll feel that blessing coming to us. So as you hold your gift in your hand, let's say our blessing together. That divine love through me bless us all, all the lives, all that are right out, all that are here, all that are received, and all that are right now. And so let's sing our blessing song. Sunday. Oh, okay, great. Um, 
The annual church meeting is going to be January 31st, immediately following the service. Uh, they'll be posting information about how to participate through Zoom later, um, uh, it will be in the weekly update. And if uh, there's going to be a phone-in call, uh, call, call in phone number available as well, so you actually can participate if you have a question and um, want clarification. Okay. The, um, our chaplain for today is Jude, and she will meet you in the back of the church if you have an interest in spending a little time with her today. And if you want to extend that into a month's worth of prayers, you can send your prayers to prayerunitywinsburg at gmail.com. Uh, and we need, um, let's see, again, still anyone who still is not receiving the weekly update, you can um, make that happen by going to our website and signing up. And that will get you that weekly information about what's going on here. So I have to just add <laughs> the, the, the power of God that has always surrounded me. I have always called love. Anybody that gets an email from me, <laughs> my little catchphrase is only love is real. And one of the things that got me through last week is uh, something I learned a long time ago, and that is all acts are either an act of love or a call for love. That's it. Because only the love part is real. So that helped me a lot. And maybe somebody else will enjoy using that to get through the tough times. Now we will gonna sing our peace song. Thank you, Mary. Also, I want to thank everyone that helped with taking down the Christmas decorations last week. That was very helpful. So um, we appreciate you and all the things that so many of you do behind the scenes that um, sometimes we, we might forget how blessed we are. So let's sing our peace song together. Thank you. 